my friends and hello my students. This is Meir talking to you from the Center for Self Healing. I'm talking to you with staff and friends, and I just finished a lecture in State University where 100 people saw better at the end of an hour and a half of work. And even though I finished the lecture later than I should have, nobody left the room and the professor allowed me to stay a bit longer. It was with Eric Pepper, a friend of mine, and an extremely good practitioner of biofeedback. So, one of the most important things that I want to talk about is different choices that we have in life. For example, we have a whole movement of people who say that vaccines are always bad. We have a whole group of people who say that they are ignorant and they don't know what they're doing. Except those people who are considered to be ignorant many times are very educated and are far from being ignorant. But I just want to tell you about something that happened to my own son. He was born with cataracts like me. And I cannot tell you how hard it is to see that your own son has exactly the same problem you were born with. And I was trying to find all kinds of alternatives to his cataract, and one of them was a, a supposedly holistic healer who had electronic things that were basically making a lot of light and vibration in his eyes, which he responded by screaming very loud, and he wasn't really a screaming baby. And it may have not been very good for him. Another thing that happened is he was vaccinated against whooping cough in the middle of having a flu, which I thought was very dangerous for him. So let me tell you what my opinion is. I think vaccines sometimes can work very well. And yet, I saw polio patients who got polio from the vaccine against polio. Several of them, not one and not two. And <clears throat> I saw a, a girl who got uh, contraction and convulsions thanks to some vaccines as well. For that reason, what I want to say is that yes, we should have some vaccines, but never when we're in a vulnerable state. Never ever. You have to see what happens to the whole person, to the whole child, to the whole baby when a vaccine is being given to them. And you have to see the mental and physical state when it's being administrated and never take it for granted. I like the fact that more and more doctors give dead polio viruses as a vaccine to kids before they give them a full polio virus. So the immune system starts and work. You cannot simply overload the immune system and think that there's not going to be any penalty for it. Even though the quantities are small and we produce a bunch of antibodies as a result of it, what's uh, very important, I remember myself, I used to be sick every time I went to Europe. But I allowed myself to be sick. I fasted and ate fruit and got rid of the sickness. And now I never get sick going to Europe. And um, lately I had a flu that just kept itself present with me for a month. I totally got healed when I went to Israel, which I didn't intend to go second time, and had one day off, almost off. I had only one patient. And I lied in bed, but also I was in a place that was close to the place of my childhood and adolescence, only a few streets away from the apartment I, I used to live in which I rented in Airbnb, and I felt at home. And that was so healing. I can't even tell you how healing it felt. And guess what? I got completely out of that flu. Well, many people take too many vaccines, way too many vaccines. And you have to understand that it's not without a price. When you make the immune system immune against certain viruses and bacterias, 
it may be too active to fight with them and not with others. And that's why some vaccines have to be administrated. The polio vaccines, the whooping cough vaccine, and many, many others. But we got to a place where too many of them are being administrated. That's what medicine normally does. When something works, they do too much of it. They do too much of it. I would like people to be cautious about not taking vaccines, to be cautious about taking them, but taking them in a time that the body is ready for it, not when a child is sick, not when the child is upset, but just in the right moment. And I would like people to also understand that we could take too many of them. So that is my viewpoint about that issue. What I wanted to say is I'm very, very excited about another issue. And that is that I am right now in the journal Experience Life. And a quote from that is going to be uh, down here after my message. Uh, The important thing to say that uh, was quoted for me is the fact that research shows that circulation to the eyes is very important, but research also shows that circulation in the eyes is very important for the rest of the body. And so loosening your scalp and your skull is very important. Remember the exercise? Let's just do it. Move your head in rotating motion in both directions. See how flexible or tight your neck is. And turn off the program for just 30 seconds as you do it. Now, when you turn it on again, massage your scalp. Separate between the skull and the scalp. And do it for a minute or two, so turn off the program again. Now, tap on your belly and say center, center. Center. You have to see how 100 people in State University did it with me. Center. Then massage your skull again. Turn off the program. Turn it back on in a minute. Now that you turn it on, see how it is to move your head in rotating motion. In the class, everybody had a looser neck after that. So loosening the neck, loosening the scalp is so important for your eyes so they get more circulation however following the nine principles of natural vision improvement including relaxation of the eyes adaptation to different light frequencies peripheral expansion looking at details looking at a distance paying attention to details and balancing the use of the eyes and several others they would lead to more blood flow to the rest of the body. So working on the body helps the eyes and working on the eyes helps the body. And that is my message. So I'm looking forward to see all of you in my upcoming workshop. I'll have one in San Francisco on the 3rd and the 4th of May. We'll have a nice workshop self healing through movement and natural vision improvement. We'll have one in Vancouver on the 11th and 12th. And we'll have one in Seattle on the 16th and 17th. So uh, all the beginning of May is full of that workshop, self healing through movement and natural vision improvement, which can make a very big difference in everyone's life. The thing I want all of you to be aware of is my uh, training course, which is really study for the purpose of studying this work, this work that helps so many people to see better, and walk out of the wheelchair. And we have part one training on the 5th of August, from the 5th to the 24th of August. And it's an intensive program, but it teaches quite a bit about the body. So I'm looking forward to see many of you in the West Coast. And those of you can come to San Francisco, to Seattle, and to Vancouver. I'm looking forward to see you soon. And those who can come to the August training, I think we will have a lot of fun uh, learning and discovering the kinesthetic sense of the body to really treat the body as a whole 
to really respond to the body's needs and do all that we can do to move ourselves forwards. Many blessings to all of you, Mayor. Mm-hmm.